Your car's charging system is what keeps the car's battery up to a healthy state of charge. We're going to talk about the alternator today and how it works inside. So your alternator is kind of like an electron pump. It pushes electricity back into the battery. Now, most batteries have a voltage of 12.6 volts. If you're an AGM battery, about 12.8. So in order for an alternator to overcome the pressure of voltage in the battery, you have to introduce a voltage that is higher than a 12.6. So generally, we're looking at voltage rates of somewhere between 13.5 and in some cases up to 15.2. Most charging systems run at about 13.5 to 14.8 volts when they're charging. Now voltage varies depending on the state of charge in the battery. If the battery has a low state of charge, the alternator's output is going to increase if the battery voltage is higher, then the alternator will simply produce less voltage. Okay, we're gonna start by taking the front pulling nut off. Now we're gonna use an impact for this, for the disassembly, and we'll tighten that later on properly with the ratchet. We have a little spacer that goes on top of our, of our fan here. This actually also acts to bat dirt away, so it kind of acts like a centrifugal filter in some ways. Back housing on there. We've got a mark indicating the alignment of the front housing from the back housing. Pretty simple system, actually. You've got a winding around the outside called a stator and you have a rotor in the middle, which is actually an electromagnet. Now, we have these two rings back here called slip rings, and each copper ring is attached to one end of a winding. So uh, the copper ring, which is, has power sent to it by a brush, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, sends its current through the interior winding, which is wrapped around the rotor many times. And the other end of the winding where it comes out is joined to the other slip ring on the other side. Now, if I was to take power, run a ground on one side and a power source on the other, this would be a strong magnetic field. But as we rotate this magnetic field, these little magnetic poles are gonna pass the stator winding in here. And every time magnetic fields pass by these windings, they're gonna induce voltage in those windings. So alternators are actually named by the fact that they produce alternating current internally, and they then convert alternating current to direct current through a rectification process. And that special device, the rectifier, is gonna do all the conversion. It takes all the back and forth movement of electrons in these windings and redirects it into one continuous direction into DC current and passes it out the back of the alternator right to that terminal, which then sends it over to the battery. We're gonna take this apart further so you can look inside. But if I look internally in here, you're gonna see uh, a couple important devices right down there, pointing at that. That's called a voltage regulator. And you can see the brushes right here that are spring-loaded that make contact with the rotor inside. Now, this little part here called a voltage regulator is going to be able to control the strength of the magnetic field in the rotor. Now, if we can regulate the strength of this rotor's magnetic field, we can control the amount of voltage output that is going to put into those stator windings. And if we reduce the voltage in the stator windings, ultimately reduce the amount of voltage that's going to come out of the alternator. Let's take it apart a little bit further. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's one other part in there, that little cylinder that you see in there. That's called a condenser. And it also controls some of the static discharge in there as well, so it doesn't have an impact on your radios. Okay, and you can see the stator here where there's three terminals coming out. Those will be directed to the rectifier over here. Okay, now we're gonna take out the inside uh, two pieces here, the rectifier and the voltage regulator. And what I'm taking out right now is a diode trio. And I'll explain what this does in a moment. There's a set of diodes there. Now, this rectifier actually has six diodes in it. 
It has three diodes right there and three diodes right there. Three of these diodes are hooked to what we call a insulated side and the other three are the non-insulated side that we actually uh, will allow the rectifier bridge to make its way to ground. It's interesting how diodes work. Diodes only allow electricity to travel one way and they're like uh, little flat discs in there. You can see them. They're like little hockey pucks kind of in there. Now the electricity can travel one way but it can't reverse. Now if we set up the diodes in a certain configuration, we can take that alternating current and redirect it so it all goes one way. And this is the device that does all the conversion from AC to DC. Just taking out the voltage regulator right now and the brush assembly. Chevrolet used to stack their brush assembly right on top of their voltage regulator. And these voltage regulators that you see in these, this style of alternator was a transistorized voltage regulator. In old days, we used to have external voltage regulators. This is obviously internal, it's inside the alternator. But these are nice and compact, fully solid state. There's no moving parts, fully transistorized. And their sole function is to monitor the amount of voltage in the battery, then adjust the strength of the magnetic field on the rotor to up the voltage output or lower it going to the battery. Diode trio plays a role in how your battery light inside your car works or your charging system light. So if you start your car up initially, your light will go on in the car as the power is sent to the uh, through the voltage regulator and into the fields of the of the rotor. And once it starts up, the uh, as the voltage becomes positive on each side of the bulb, the light will go out and uh, this little diode trio is, is instrumental in, in controlling the uh, flow of current through that light and how it responds inside your car. If this guy fails, it generally will have an impact on that light inside the vehicle and uh, can affect how your car charges. Here's some straightforward tests you can do with an alternator. Take your ohm meter out, set it on ohm setting. What you wanna do is check the winding continuity through the rotor itself and you're really just gonna go from slip ring to slip ring and read the resistance value on the ohm meter. In this case, we've got 3.0 ohms on it approximately. So that tells me that my winding is continuous from one side of the slip ring to the other one. Now, we also wanna check if there's any grounds to the central part of the rotor. There shouldn't be, it should remain out of limit when you touch those two slip rings and it does. So we have no shorts to ground in this particular rotor. Uh, other things that happen on these is the slip rings sometimes wear out. And uh, you know, if you're in the business of rebuilding these, guys will take them to the lathe and they'll lightly take some off in the metal lathe to make them smooth again. But what we'll do generally with these things is we'll sand these if they're rough before we put them back together using a little emery cloth. Just want to test the diode trio here. She's gonna place this on diode mode and we're gonna watch on her meter. And we should see that we get continuity one direction through the diodes. But if we reverse it, reverse the polarity of the probes, we should have an outer limit showing the other direction. And that's telling us that the diodes are all in good shape because diodes only allow current to travel one direction, not the other. That's what a diode does. And we've got three diodes within this diode trio. We can also test the rectifier bridge, those six diodes internally. So a little strap on every diode that you see goes internally on to a diode. Now the diode spans from here to here. So you can see that little gap in there. The diode is in there. We should see on this one, we, we should see when we test these, if we touch the terminals, that we'll get continuity one direction. So all those diodes are showing continuity that way. If I reverse the probes through the diode, it should show, in this case, out of limit on all those diodes that direction. Now we'll also have to do the other half and check for continuity traveling one way through that set of diodes but not the other. And we should see, we should see that we're out of limit 
in the other direction. So we can tell that all six diodes in this rectifier bridge are in good shape. If any of those combinations showed continuity two ways or out of limit two ways, we'd know that we have a faulty diode or more in there based on what we find. And by the way, all these rectifier bridges generally have a set of fins around them to keep that rectifier cool because there's a lot of heat produced when it rectifies current from AC to DC. One last little test you want to do when you're checking an alternator out is check the condition of the stator. We should see continuity between each terminal on here. And this is a fairly coarse winding, so you're going to have a fairly low resistance value through there. So all the combinations are good. But you should see outer limit here. When you go to the central part of the stator itself, and you want to scratch the paint off when you do that, and all these are showing outer limit which is what we want because it's supposed to be insulated. So all those tests are fine on there. Now you do have a little ballast resistor here that's gonna control uh, part of the, the circuit through the voltage regulator. So we're gonna wanna check that guy to make sure there's continuity in it as well and it's in good shape. And of course, whenever you're checking an alternator out, you're also gonna wanna check the condition of the brushes and springs in there. Now, whenever you load brushes on these Chevrolets, they got a little hole in there. You actually will run a wire through it and you run it through the back of the case. I'll try to do that before we put it together. As an experiment, we're gonna hook our voltmeter up to one branch of the stator. And I'm gonna pass a magnet inside of that and rotate it. And you can see that starting to create some voltage signal out of there. And the faster I can turn it, the stronger my magnetic field is, of course. And the more of those windings I can cut with a magnetic field, the more voltage output I will have coming out of those leads there. So magnets passing a conductor induce the voltage into the conductor and that's how an alternator works. Now, when you're putting brushes back into a Chevrolet brush assembly, there's a, you're gonna need a piece of wire to do this. You'll push your brush in with your finger, run a little wire through that one hole of the brush assembly, load the other brush the same way. And then you're gonna run the wire over top of the brush and poke it through the other side of the brush assembly. A little tricky, but that works really well once you got it in there. Now we're gonna use that wire to reassemble that back into the alternator housing at the back. And that once we're through the housing, this wire will come out the back of the housing. When it's all fully assembled, we then pull out the wire and the brushes will be loaded up against the rotor inside. So let's put this all back together now. And this is a particular type of ratchet that has a opening in the middle for another ratchet to go through the center. And that's reassembled. And uh, actually there's a few ways you can check to see the, how healthy your alternator is. We're gonna show you a simple way just to see if you're actually getting adequate voltage so it doesn't leave you stalled on the road. So we're gonna use a voltmeter here, we'll set it on DC volts, and we're gonna start the vehicle up and we're gonna monitor what kind of voltage output it's creating while it's actually running. A good running alternator will produce a varying voltage to the battery depending on the state of the battery charge. So you may see your battery running down around 13 and a half to as high as about 14.8 volts, although some older Chrysler vehicles used to run up to 15.2 at one time, so it can vary from vehicle to vehicle. Also, point to note, with some new computerized controlled uh, regulation of uh, alternators, they can run a little bit lower because they're trying to reduce the amount of drag on the engine to increase fuel economy. So check your specifications, know exactly what spec range it should run at as far as voltage goes. 
We're going to start the car up. We're going to put everything on. I'm going to put the lights on. I'm going to put the, the heater fan on, the AC, everything that I can on the car. And I want to see what kind of voltage it can sustain while it's running. So I've turned everything on, including the rear defroster. And let's see what kind of voltage we're going to have at idle. We also can rev it up to see what happens to the voltage while we rev it. So this one's running a nice high response on there, 14.4 volts on there. And as the battery charges, of course, uh, it will come down. But because there's a lot of demand on the charging system right now with everything on, the voltage regulator is telling the alternator to kick it up and produce more. So that's a good healthy voltage response. If you saw something down uh, under 13 volts, and you were finding that when you put the lights on and everything on, it started dropping below the 12.6 volt range. It's obviously can't keep up to the demands of the battery, and there's something going on with that alternator. This particular load tester has a carbon file inside where the battery cables run to, and we can impose a load on the battery and work it quite hard. And at that point, we can see how the alternator responds to the loads we put on it. So, okay, I'm going to take an inductive clamp now and I'm going to put this to the back of the alternator where the juice comes out of the alternator. So let's rev that up. I'm going to put a load on the battery through the carbon pile and I'm going to keep the RPM up while I'm doing that and I want to watch what kind of output that alternator is going to create going to the machine. So right now I'm I think at about 37 amps at rest there. We're going to rev it up and see what happens. I'm going to work this load knob back and forth to try to find the highest amp value that I can out of the truck's alternator. And it's passing really well. I've got a 120 amp alternator and it's producing just about that full amount. 